Hello, my name is Jamil Mushtai. Today I'm building on my previous podcast on conjunctivitis with conjunctivitis 2 curious cases. So this podcast will be on the slightly rarer and more severe forms of conjunctivitis. I won't be going over the basic anatomy and physiology of the conjunctiva as I already went over this in my last podcast, so feel free to check that out if you want a refresher. I've structured this podcast according to my previous one, so I'll be going over bacterial, viral and allergic causes of conjunctivitis, in particular gonococcal and chlamydial, and under viral herpes simplex and under allergic vernal keratoconjunctivitis or VKC. So these types of conjunctivitis will serve as an introduction into some general ophthalmological concepts and furthermore most of these types of conjunctivitis have some corneal involvement due to their increased severity so there's a bit of overlap there. So if we start off with bacterial and uh, gonococcal conjunctivitis this is caused by Neisseria gonorrhea which is an intracellular gram-negative diplococcus it's a really contagious sexually transmitted infection. So the clinical features are very similar to that of normal bacterial conjunctivitis with papillae, uh, lid swelling and chemosis, which is conjunctival edema, and mucopurulent discharge. However, what differentiates it is that it has a hyper acute onset with substantial discharge, and the eyelids may become close shut due to the drying of the discharge. In addition, there may be formation of a pseudomembrane. This is a loosely adherent layer of tissue composed of inflammatory cells, which is different to an actual membrane or panis, which we'll cover later. Lastly, there's characteristic corneal involvement with a marginal ulcer, which is ulceration on the edges of the cornea which may progress into a ring-shaped ulcer, and finally perforation and endophthalmitis, which is inflammation inside the eyeball. With regard to investigations, they aren't really done routinely, as the um, clinical features are quite characteristic. Treatment is with topical antibiotics with saline, and keftriaxone can be given if there's keratitis. In addition, systemic treatment is given um, as it's a sexually transmitted infection and it has uh, systemic clinical features. So moving swiftly on, we're going to uh, chlamydial conjunctivitis. And this is in two main forms. The first is uh, called trachoma and it's a type that's more prevalent in third world countries. And the second type is called inclusion conjunctivitis, which is more prevalent in first world countries. So we'll start off with trachoma, and this is caused by serotypes A to C of chlamydia trachomatis, and it is transmitted via fly vector. It's quite a unique type of conjunctivitis, um, and it's characterized by follicles, which usually are associated with viral causes, and also cicatricial changes. What this means is basically that there's damage to the conjunctiva and tarsal plates, which leads to interning of eyelashes and the eyelid, causing a chronic inflammatory process, which leads to superficial keratitis and formation of a panis, which is a tightly adherent membrane. And these all lead to the blindness. In addition, uh, there may be small blisters on the junction of the cornea and the conjunctiva, which are called limbal follicles. Investigations are usually done with swabs for immunofluorescence. However, as this condition usually affects the third world, these aren't routinely done. Treatment is by a a um, WHO initiative called SAFE Surgery, S-A-F-E, which involves surgery for the trachiasis, which is the interning of the eyelashes, 
antibiotics, face washing and general hygiene improvement, and environmental improvement to reduce the prevalence of the fly vector. So that's trachoma in a nutshell. Moving on to occlusion conjunctivitis. This is named after the inclusion bodies traditionally seen on smear and is caused by the other serotypes of uh, chlamydia trachomatis, so D to K. It's milder than trachoma and there's minimal scarring and rarely permanent visual loss. Uh, as I said before, it's more common in first world countries, particularly in young sexually active males. So the clinical features are of the sexually transmitted infection, uh, which are cervicitis or urethritis. It's usually got a unilateral subacute onset and there's mucopurent discharge, lidedema, and also some ptosis and lymphadenopathy, which are fairly um, non-specific clinical features. There is presence of uh, papillae, which can change into follicles. And as with trachoma, there's a panis. One of the uh, differentiating signs is that the clinical features are worse on the superior bulba conjunctiva. And there's keratitis which, with epithelial erosions and sub-epithelial opacities. Investigation is via conjunctival swab and treatment with chloramphenicol and systemic antibiotics for the sexually transmitted infection. Okay, so that covers our um, gonococcal and chlamydial conjunctivitis. And we'll move on to viral with herpes simplex. So herpes simplex is a double-stranded DNA virus which can stay dormant in the ganglion. Um, so clinical features are uh, blepharokeratoconjunctivitis, which is inflammation of the eyelids, the cornea, and the conjunctiva, and this is in primary infection. And there are some classic vesicles on the eyelid. Corneal involvement is via a dendritic ulcer, which is pathognomonic, and this is a branching ulcer of the cornea. It can be geographic in cases of uh, immunosuppression, which means that it covers ulceration covers large areas of the cornea. However, reactivation leads to larger corneal ulceration and it can include the iris as well. Corneal anesthesia may develop, which is lack of sensation on the cornea. And finally, prolonged or repeated reactivation of the herpes simplex virus can lead to an autoimmune response, which is very rare. Now, herpes simplex is very close to another infection called herpes zoster. Um, and this, you can differentiate the two by the um, sensory nerve distribution. So in herpes simplex, multiple sensory nerves are affected, whereas in herpes zoster, only one sensory nerve is affected. Also, there isn't the dendritic ulcers in the herpes zoster infection. Treatment is by topical acyclovir, which is an antiviral. Okay, so moving swiftly on to uh, our allergic conjunctivitis. So we're talking about vernal keratoconjunctivitis now, or VKC. And this is a rare allergic disorder, usually in young male patients with a history of A to B, and it's usually caused by seasonal allergens. So clinical features are that of usual uh, allergic uh, conjunctivitis of itching and mucus discharge. However, as this is a really severe form, there's cobblestoning of the superior um, conjunctiva. What this means is that there are large papillae um, formed on the superior conjunctiva underneath the eyelid. In addition, 
there's something called trantostats, which are limbal eosinophil aggregates, so around the cornea. Lastly, as with all um, type conjunctivitis, there can be some corneal involvement. So treatment is like most allergic um, disorders via sodium chromoglycate, which is a mast cell stabilizer, steroids to dampen down the inflammation, and cyclosporin to prevent secondary infection. If severe, you can give systemic immunosuppression and also surgical um, treatment is via debridement of the uh, conjunctival inflammation. So that was a really quick uh, tour through some really classical uh, types of conjunctivitis which are not really routinely seen. And I hope that was helpful and I hope to see you again.